lot more of this rectum thing. Same. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph the tangent and cotangent functions when we have a vertical shift. Now, in this case, you can see actually we have two equations here. Um, I have the tangent and the cotangent. And I know that there's going to be a vertical shift, which would be our k. Because it's not inside the parentheses, not in, within our function, it's outside of our function. So we're actually going to have quite a bit of changes to our graphs. And you can see I have the parent graphs because the way that I like to graph these is you know, basically taking our parent graph and then applying the transformations to our parent graph to be able to get our graph. So the one thing, though, that remains you know, kind of constant whenever we're doing tangent and cotangent, or really all of our graphs, is to identify all the information first. So you can see here is we have an A, right? I have a B. In this problem, I do not have a C, but I do have a K. So remember, there is no amplitude. So I don't have to figure out anything. But the first thing I'm going to do is figure out the period. Now remember, period is going to do is only pi. Right? The distance of our periods for our tangent and cotangent is only pi. So it's going to be pi divided by b, which in this case is pi over pi, which is just equal to 1. Then my x scale is going to always be my period divided by 4. So I take 1 divided by 4, and I'm just left with 1 fourth. Um, the next thing we need to do is determine our uh, starting point. Because whenever we have something inside of a function, we know that there's going to be a start. Now, I know there's no plus or minus, so therefore I'm still going to be starting at 0. But I'll still just show you what I mean by that. So therefore, I take whatever's inside of my function, and I do pi x equal to 0. Then I solve for x. So I divide by pi on both sides, and I get x equals 0. So therefore, that's where we're going to start, which is the same as our initial period. All right. The only other thing I want you to understand here is now 2, what that's going to do is since that is larger than 1, that is going to vertically stretch our graph. Rather than the points being on the graph at negative 1 and 1, they're now going to be going up to 2 and down to negative 2. And, but then we're also going to take that whole graph and then shift it down 2 units. Okay, So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph two, um, two graphs to the right. To the right. So, Let's start with, um, we're starting at 0. So let's have 0 be right here. OK. So if this is at 0, my x scale is going to be 1 fourth. Uh, I'm sorry, negative 1 fourth. Then this would be negative 2 fourths. And I'll go by force here just to make everything easy. That's going to be my, inner, uh, my asymptote. So therefore, this would be 1 fourth, 2 fourths, my other asymptote. That's be my first period. Then let's go to the next period. 3 fourths, 4 fourths. That's going to be my intercept. 5 fourths, 6 fourths. And that'll be my other asymptote. Now, a lot of times, you know, I'm writing them down in the force just so it's kind of easy for you guys to see how to scale it. However, it would be preferable for you guys to reduce these. You know, that'd be 3 halves. That's obviously 1. That's 1 half, negative 1 half, and so forth. So um, I just wrote it kind of out there so you guys can kind of see the easy way to scale. Because a lot of students get mixed up on how to scale things when it's dealing with fractions. So we basically have two intercepts here. But remember, instead of starting at 0, I'm taking this whole graph and I'm shifting it down to units. So I'm actually not going to be intersecting at the x-axis. I'm actually going to be intersecting at negative 2. Then remember that my, um, my a is 2. So rather than having my next point being going over 1, up 1, it's going to go over 1, up 2. So I'm going to go over to my next critical point and then go up 2, which would actually be from there. And then go over 1, go down 2. Over here, I'll go over 1, up 2, and then over 1, down 2. So therefore, then you just kind of follow the pattern of your graph. And you can see that it has been vertically stretched. Boom. All right, there you go. So in the next case, um, now what I'd like to do is go ahead and go with cotangent. Now, you can see cotangent here has, again, a b, which is a fraction. And then we also have a vertical transformation of pi over 2. I think I made this one up. Let's go ahead and see what happens here. Um, so the first thing we want to do is determine what our period. I can't remember 
which it says. So our period is going to be pi divided by our b, which is 1 half. So then you multiply by the reciprocal. So that becomes 2 pi. Our x scale is going to be our period divided by 4. So that's going to be 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi halves. Our start is going to be basically, again, if you remember, we basically take our um, whatever's inside of our function set equal to 0. So I have 1 half x plus pi halves equal to 0. Well, now we've got to solve for 0. So the first thing I do is subtract pi halves. And then I have 1 half x equals negative pi halves. Then I multiply by the reciprocal. And I get x equals um, a negative pi. So therefore, in this one, instead of starting at 0, I'm now going to be starting at negative pi. And my x scale here is going to be pi halves which is different than typically we'll have it as pi. So now you can see my period is actually now at 2 pi, and my x scale is going to be at pi half. So um, to do this one, let's do two periods to the right again. So let's have here be 0. But I'm not going to start at 0 like I did for my parent graph. I'm going to start at negative pi. Um, let's see. So if we start at negative pi, Okay, so that's negative pi. Then my x scale here is um, pi halves. So this would be negative. Oh, we start at negative pi. OK. Um, I'm losing my mind. OK, negative pi. So this would be negative pi halves. This would be at 0. OK, this is, sorry, my scale is a little off here. Let's do, so that would be negative pi negative pi halves, 0, pi halves. So remember, wherever we start for the cotangent, um, that is going to be an asymptote. This will be a point. This is going to be an intercept, point on the graph. And then plus pi halves is going to be at pi. And then we'll just continue this. So add another pi halves, which would be 3 pi halves. Um, 4 pi halves, which would be at 2 pi. That's going to be an intercept. Um, 4, pi, 4 pi halves, so this would be 5 pi halves. And then 6 pi halves, which would be 3 pi. And then another asymptote. Now, instead of graphing exactly the parent graph here, all right, so I, I, I change it for our period. You can see our period is now pi. The distance of uh, one reception is pi. I'm doing two periods. We can see I did the x scale. I started at a new point of, of negative pi. I still have my y-axis here. right? Here's my y-axis. But now my y-axis is not on my asymptote. I've moved everything, shifted everything over to the left. Um, but now the only other thing left is I know I'm going to go up one and down negative one. But I'm also, everything, this whole graph is now being shifted up one unit. So instead of intersecting at 0, on the x-axis, I'm now going to be intersecting at 1. Instead of going down 1 and up 1, my points are going to go up 1 here and down 1. Up 1 and down 1. Then you just follow the shape of the graph. Okay, So this one had a vertical stretch because you had your a was greater than 1. This one did not have a vertical stretch, but we also had, um, we had a phase shift. We shifted the graph to the left in addition to raising the graph up. Where this one, we stretched it and we changed the period, but we didn't shift it left or right. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are just two more examples for how to graph the tangent and cotangent function. Thanks. Oh.